Um, now I have the pleasure to introduce uh, Peteri Ki, um, I'm sorry if I pronounce it uh, wrong, Peteri Kivinaki um, from Estonia, um, whose uh, case study on X Road has also occupied an important place on our um, analysis uh, in our former research uh, regarding the relevance of APIs in digital government. Um, the floor is yours, uh, Peteri. Thank you very much, Monica. And the pronunciation was, was correct. Okay. Uh, but just one minor correction. I am from Finland, uh, but I am oh. representing an organization that is from Estonia. So okay. that was correct. But yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Petteri Kivimaki. I'm the CTO of Nordic Institute for Interoperability Solutions, NIS for short. And today I'm going to discuss uh, X-Road and how it supports REST APIs. So, uh, some of you uh, already know what is X-Road, but probably not, not everyone. So let's have a, have a short introduction so that we are all, all at the same page. So um, Bogdan already did a very good job explaining what is a four-corner model and how does it work. So I don't need to repeat that, uh, but I'm just going to say that X-Road is based on four-corner model. And in X-Road architecture, uh, the access point is called security server. So the idea of X-Road is uh, that first of all, it is a distributed uh, data exchange layer solution that provides unified and secure way to exchange data between organizations. And then on, on technical level, it works so that every organization that is member of an X-Road ecosystem uh, must have its own uh, technical access point security server that is the organization's gateway to the ecosystem and all the services that are, are available there. And uh, currently X-Road is being used uh, in Estonia, Finland and uh, Iceland is currently implementing it when we are talking about European countries. Uh, but in addition, uh, since X-Road is open source, it has users all around the world. So it's truly an, an international solution. Uh, but then uh, if we go, go back to the uh, technical side and uh, the access point approach. So uh, in, in this access point based model, the idea is that the access point uh, unifies the way how organizations exchange data and uh, it, it means that it, it provides some uh, common features out of the box that are always needed in, in the data exchange process. And in X-ROADS case, uh, those features include uh, both organization and access point level authentication using uh, PKI infrastructure uh, standardized messaging model, uh, non-repudiation and in integrity of the data that is exchanged. Uh, also uh, statistics regarding uh, the consumption of the services, access rights management, message routing and transport level encryption. Uh, on the high level, uh, the idea is that uh, organizations always exchange data directly between each other. So when we have a service consumer and service provider, uh, the data flows directly between the data exchange parties and there are no, no, no third parties have access to the data. Uh, however, the ecosystem also has other components. So uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, uh, trust related topics were discussed and uh, that's where the central components come into play in, in X-Road. Uh, so before uh, being able to exchange data with other organizations in X-Road ecosystems, the organizations must be registered as, as members of the ecosystems, which means that their identity is verified and they need to have a certificate uh, for their access point and also organizational level certificate for, for the signatures. And the certificates are issued by a trusted uh, certificate authority, usually a commercial third party. 
uh, and then they are registered on the central components of, of X-Road. So the central components, they are kind of a member registry of user organizations and uh, the source of trust in the ecosystem. And once uh, the registration has been completed, uh, all the other members uh, can access the registration data and can verify uh, other member organizations and whether they are trusted or not. So extra forms kind of a trusted network between its, its members. And in addition to the technical side, XROAD also provides an organizational framework. So uh, in XROAD ecosystem, there are different roles. First of all, uh, the XROAD operator is the organization that is re responsible for running the ecosystem, both technically and also defining the rules and, and guidelines that the ecosystem must follow. Uh, the operator also decides uh, who is allowed to join the ecosystem. And for example, in Finland and in Estonia, uh, anyone is allowed to join. So the ecosystem is of course for uh, public sector, but also private companies, municipalities, uh, non-profit organizations, anyone can join. And when the organizations join, uh, they need to uh, sign a service agreement uh, with the X-Road operator. And then they become members and can start to exchange data with other member organizations. Uh, however, uh, X-Road does not change the ownership of the data. So when a service provider uh, publishes a service via X-Road, the service provider still remains the owner of the data who decides who is allowed to access and use the data. And this means that uh, still uh, before a consumer can, uh, can access the data, there must be a service agreement between the service consumer and service provider. So uh, from organizational perspective, uh, X-Road does, does not change much. So even if we talk about point-to-point -point connections, uh, still the service provider and consumer, they, they need to have a service agreement and that applies to X-Road as well. Uh, of course, uh, it is possible uh, to issue uh, legislation uh, for, for the public sector, at least, that uh, grants access automatically to certain kind of services. But yeah, that's, that's not the topic of my talk today. But okay, uh, now we all should have an uh, understanding what X-Road is and what it does, more or less. So now we can concentrate uh, on, on today's topic, which is support for REST APIs. So first, uh, uh, let's define what REST means in X-Road's context, since uh, REST is, is not a standard, it's an architectural style that consists of best practices and, and guidelines. And in X-Road case, supporting REST means uh, supporting uh, REST style APIs and both consuming and, and producing them. And uh, X-Road's REST implementation, it, it is extremely flexible. Uh, oftentimes, REST is associated with, with JSON, so, so that uh, if, we, if you talk about REST, it always means that the data is exchanged uh, as, as JSON, uh, but in X-Road case, that's, uh, that's not, not the case. So X-Road supports transferring any content type over, over HTTP, and the message payload, it is transferred as is, so uh, the security server does not modify or convert uh, the data in, in any way. And uh, XROAD enables publishing of existing REST APIs uh, without any changes to them. Uh, and there are two ways to publish REST APIs. So uh, the easiest way is just to provide the base URL of the uh, of the API and you are good to go. However, for the consumers of the API, uh, then there must be another way 
uh, to get information how how to how to use the API, what kind of endpoints it it provides, uh, which is why a better way and the recommended way to publish an API is to use an open API tree description. So the service provider uh, it must have an open up API description of the API and provide the URL of the API description and the security server is then able to read uh, the information of, of the API from that description. And then uh, the service consumer is also able to access the service description via XROAD, which of course makes uh, utilizing the API a lot easier. Um, also consuming REST services uh, over XROAD, it requires minimal changes to existing clients. I have a practical example. Later on, it, it will, it will uh, probably illustrate that better. Then, like I mentioned, all the content types are, are supported. And when it comes to authorization, it's possible to uh, manage access rights on, on two levels. So uh, the whole API, uh, which covers all the endpoints that the API has, or uh, if fine -grained, more fine-grained authorization is needed, then it's possible to define access rights for, uh, for specific endpoints. So uh, HTTP method uh, path pairs. And then uh, meta services, uh, they are kind of support services for client applications uh, that provide information about the available services in, in the XROAD ecosystems. And then of course, all the standard XROAD features, they are also in included in, in the REST implementation. And uh, one uh, important thing to mention is that um, XROAD does not support uh, message uh, conversions between different service types. So if you have a SOAP service, uh, you must uh, invoke it using a SOAP client. And similarly, when you have a REST service, you must invoke it using a REST client. No, no automated uh, conversions are, are pro provided between REST and, and SOAP services. Then uh, the actual implementation uh, on protocol level, uh, XROAD has two different kinds of uh, protocols. So first of all, uh, messaging protocols that are protocols that are used between uh, the information system and the security server. And then uh, there's uh, the XROAD message transport protocol that is used between uh, the security servers. And when we are talking about REST services, uh, the REST clients can send any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, request using the REST interface. Uh, then the security server uh, wraps it inside uh, the transport uh, message and it is delivered to the uh, provider side security server where the message is verified, the sender is authenticated, the message is locked and so on, and if everything is okay, then uh, the original message that the client sent is, is forwarded to the actual uh, service, service provider. So um, uh, eventually the service provider receives exactly the same message uh, that the client sent, but just uh, it is uh, transferred over to internet Using, uh, using this transport protocol that in addition to the actual uh, message payload also includes uh, data related to uh, authentication and, and the message signature. So here is the re uh, example request that I uh, mentioned earlier. Here we have a, a simple pet store API. Uh, and if we call the API directly, we of course must use the base path of, of the API. Uh, and then we have API version and some path and URL parameters. Uh, then uh, if we publish this uh, same API via XROAD, uh, as you can see, uh, the API version uh, and URL and path parameters they remain exactly the same. 
uh, the only thing that changes is uh, that the base URL is replaced with the security server URL, then R1 is the version number of the security server's REST API, and then uh, service ID is an identifier that identifies the service that we are invoking. So in, in this case, the service ID uh, would be reference to, to this pet store API. But uh, the service provider, when uh, the service is, is published via XROAD, is, is uh, free to decide the, the ID of the, of the service uh, within, within certain limits, of course. And then uh, the sender uh, information system is identified uh, by using XROAD client HTTP header. And uh, similarly, the client identifies itself uh, using an XROAD identifier. And here we have a real life example how this service re request would look like. Uh, ss1.example.com is, is the URL of our security server. R1 is the version of the security server's REST API. And then uh, CSORG uh, 1111 test service, my API, is, is the identifier that identifies the service. And here you can see similarly, this is then the identifier of the uh, client information system. And based on this uh, identifier of the service, uh, the security server then knows where to route this, this message. So uh, using its configuration data, it is able to route this message to the right, right recipient. So uh, it, it also means that uh, the, the client application does not need to know anything about the physical network location of the service provider, since it's enough to know the service ID and the security server will take care of the rest. And one important thing to mention regarding the implementation, uh, as I said, uh, the messages are signed and the signature includes all the business data. So when we talk about REST APIs, uh, the business data can be located in, in different parts of the message. So it can be in the path, uh, URL parameters, also HTTP headers uh, may, may also contain uh, important data. And uh, also HTTP verb, uh, HTTP method, uh, affects how the request is processed by the service provider. So it is also included in the signature, even if it's not mentioned here. So in other words, XROAD, uh, XROAD guarantees uh, the non-repudiation of, of all this information. Then a few words about uh, meta services. Uh, so, like I shortly mentioned earlier, uh, they are services provided by the security server, uh, built-in services that can be used to query information about uh, uh, available services in the XROAD ecosystem. Uh, one way uh, to utilize the meta services is to uh, query open API or WSDL service descriptions of a, of a service provider. So a service uh, consumer can, can do it, but then or it can also be implemented centrally by the XROAD operator. So uh, having an API catalog uh, is, is a com common practice uh, and it's important to have one so that uh, the APIs can be discovered by the service consumers. Uh, and um, these meta services can be used to harvest uh, the API descriptions automatically, uh, and then they can be published uh, in, in the API catalog. For example, uh, Finland has implemented their API catalog so, uh, that uh, the service descriptions are automatically harvested uh, from their XROAD environment once a day. 
then they are published in the API catalog and the administrators of the uh, organizations that own the services, then they can log in uh, to the catalog and add additional information and metadata regarding the services. So the service catalog is not only for developers and technical users, but also for uh, business people. And it is also possible to request access to an API uh, through the catalog. So, so it serves many, many purposes. And uh, one essential part of it is uh, the automated collection of the, of the API descriptions. And uh, another good example uh, about the use of those meta services is uh, the collection of monitoring and statistics data. Uh, the security server automatically collects uh, uh, monitoring and statistics data about all the service requests that it processes. Uh, of course, the organizations that are running the security server, they can access it locally, it's available to them, uh, but also the X-Road operator is able to access uh, that information centrally. Uh, it means that it is possible for the operator to collect uh, statistics from all the security servers that are members of the ecosystem and have a centralized view uh, regarding the use of the services and what kind of relationships there are between different organizations. And it's also possible to utilize that data uh, to build alerts, for example, because it's possible to see from the data if a service call is uh, constantly failing, for example, and then uh, generate an alert and maybe notify the owning organization. But yeah, uh, many different kind of, uh, there are many different kind of use cases that can be implemented using that, that data. And of course the operate, the security server owners are uh, able to do what, whatever they want with it locally. But thank you. Any questions or comments? I think we don't at the moment have any questions in the chat. Also, I think that we are running a little bit behind the like, schedule. Yeah. So, uh, but still, I want to thank uh, Petteri for, for driving us through the complexity of X Roads, ICT, and organizational ecosystem uh, in, in such a comprehensive uh, fashion. Also, for clearly explaining how REST. Uh, architectural style features in in X Road, and uh, to to give some hints on on the topics that are um, uh, the focus of today, such as the, the discoverability and the way that Finland is automatically harvesting uh, the API description into their catalogs, and how they use the security server for monitoring and 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 uh, the, and, and doing some statistics on the usage of of these APIs, very very interesting for to 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 our analysis indeed. 